What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to graph parabolas. So I'm going to start with a couple easy ones just to make sure we understand some basic concepts. And then I'm also going to show you how to graph these in standard form, vertex form, and intercept form, right? So the most basic type of parabola you're going to see is in this form right here. Y is equal to AX squared. And the most basic function is the parent function, which is this one right here. Y is equal to X squared. And this function just looks something like that, right? Now, two really important things to be able to find on a parabola are the vertex and the axis of symmetry, right? The vertex is gonna be either the lowest point or the highest point on your parabola, or it's basically where the two sides of the parabola meet. So here, you can see they meet right here. I drew it a little high, but it's actually right on the origin, right at zero comma zero. So uh, when your parabola opens up like this, the vertex is gonna be at what's called a minimum point or minimum spot. Okay, and you use the y-axis to basically tell where it is. Okay, so the minimum spot for this parabola would be at y is equal to zero, right there, right? And if your parabola, let's just draw another random one over here. Let's put it right there. Okay, if it opens downward, then your vertex is going to be at the very top, right? Again, kind of where the two sides meet. So here, the, the vertex would be at a maximum spot. And then again, you would just use the, the y-axis right here to say where it is. So here, it looks like it's at about negative one, right? So we could say that the maximum spot right here is at y is equal to negative one, right? And the other thing you need to be able to find is the axis of symmetry. So that basically just splits your parabola in half. And the other thing is it always runs through the vertex. So for this one, the axis of symmetry just runs straight on top of the, the y axis right here, right? And that's how we split this one in half. So this is the axis of symmetry. And for this one, you basically just use the, the x axis to define where it is. So here, it would be at x is equal to zero. Okay, and then for this one over here, the axis of symmetry would be right there, right? Right through the vertex right there. And then here we could say that this is negative one, negative two, negative three. So we could say that the axis of symmetry for this one is at x is equal to negative 2.5, right? Negative two and a half, right, right there. Okay, so that's what the vertex, axis of symmetry, and the min and max points are. All right, and then the last thing you might be asked to find are the domain and range. So the domain is always going to be the same for all of these parabolas that we do. And it's going to be for uh, all real numbers. So there's two ways you can show that. You can either write it like this, all real numbers, or you could say, using interval notation, the domain goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, these will, this will always be your answer for the domain, right? Because the domain goes from side to side. And then the range is vertical, right? It's our y values. So for the range, for this one over here, so here the lowest spot that we hit is zero, right? We hit exactly zero. So for the range, we can say it goes from zero, and so that's why we draw a bracket, because we're including zero, and then it goes all the way to positive infinity, right? So positive infinity like that, okay? And then for this one, if you wanted to find the range, we could do that also. So for this one, you can see the very top point that it hits right here is negative one, right? So we're gonna say it goes from negative one, and then this one goes down towards negative infinity, right? Negative infinity, like that. Okay, now it's really useful to be able to kind of have an idea of what the parabola is going to look like by just looking at the function, okay? And the way you're going to be able to tell is by just looking at this very first number that's next to the x squared, okay? Even if we have a long, astronomically long equation or function, whatever, just look at this very first number next to the x squared. So if this number is bigger than one, it's kind of counterintuitive. It's actually going to be skinnier. It gets skinnier and skinnier the bigger this number gets, okay? So here we have a five. Five is obviously bigger than one. So this parabola would look something like that, okay? You can see it gets skinnier, right? Okay, and the sign is really important. So here we have a positive five, but if this was a negative five, it's gonna look exactly like this one. The only difference is it's gonna be flipped, okay? So it's gonna look something like that, all right? And then over here, again, just look at the very first number next to the x squared, we have two sevens. Now, if the number is ever between zero and one, this is gonna get bigger, fatter, wider. So this one would look something like that, okay? And then again, if this were negative by any chance, it would just look like that, just flipped. Okay, the next form that you're gonna see is something like this. Y is equal to x squared plus c. So this uh, plus or minus c here at the end, it just tells you where the y-intercept is, okay? So for example, if we had a parabola like that, like that, the y-intercept is just wherever the parabola crosses the y-axis. So here, it'd be right there, right? And then for this problem specifically, it says find the zeros and then graph it, okay? So what are the zeros? So the zeros are just wherever your parabola cross the x axis. So that would be here and here, okay? So for these, those are the three points that we need to graph the parabola. 
So let's actually graph this properly. Now, here we have p of x is equal to negative 12x squared plus 3, all right? So the first thing that we see here is we have a negative 12, all right? So 12, that's bigger than 1, right? So that's, that means this is going to be a skinny parabola, and it's negative. So it's going to be upside down, okay? So it's going to look something like that, right? And then we also have a positive 3 right here, so that this is where our parabola hits the y-axis. So let's say 1, 2, 3, okay? So there's the y-intercept, and then we know it's going to go down, and it's skinny, all right? So let's, again, actually graph this. And we're going to do that by first finding the zeros. So how do you find the zeros of a function like this? Well, all you have to do is set your function equal to zero, okay? So here we're just going to say zero is equal to negative 12x squared plus 3, all right? Now let's solve for x. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. Those cancel out. Zero minus 3 is negative 3. So we get negative 3 is equal to negative 12x squared. All right, now I'm going to move this just to give ourselves some room. Okay, so then uh, negative 3 is equal to negative 12x squared. So then here uh, we'll get rid of the negative 12 by dividing both sides by negative 12. Right here, those cancel out. So then negative 3 divided by negative 12 is equal to positive 3 over 12, but we can reduce that down to 1 over 4. And then that's equal to x squared. Right, so to get rid of the exponent, again, just take the square root of both sides. And to take the square root of a fraction, it's actually easier to just take the square root of the top and at the bottom. Sometimes that's easier, okay? So then on this side, uh, the square root and the squared exponent cancel out. So then we're just left with this x right here. So we get x is equal to here, the square root of one is one, one, and that's over the square root of four, which is two. Okay, so then this is gonna be plus or minus, right, one half. So here we get x is equal to positive one half and x is equal to negative one half, right? These are where the graph cross the x axis at one half and negative one half. So let's magically add some lines, boom. All right, so one half, negative one half, right? So that's about here and here, okay? And then we need to find the vertex or the y-intercept. So again, that's at positive three, okay? Now, whenever the parabola is specifically in this form, you can find the vertex just using the number right here at the very end. So it's at positive three, right? So we're gonna go one, two, three. All right, so it's right there. And then we can draw this bad boy. There we go. All right, now let's graph something in standard form. So standard form is f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c, or well, a and b are your coefficients, and c is your constant, okay? So they're just numbers, right? So here we have y is equal to 3x squared minus 6x plus 5. Now, in order to graph these, the two things you're going to have to find first are the axis of symmetry and the vertex, right? So how the hell do you find those? Well, the axis of symmetry, remember, it's just an x value, right? To find the axis of symmetry, you need this little formula, and it's negative b over 2a. So this is a, this is b, right? Remember to include your sign, and that's c, okay? So here we're going to have negative b, which is negative 6, over 2a, and a is 3. So then we get negative, negative 6 over 6. Now negative 6 divided by 6, that's equal to negative 1. So then we have negative 1 times a negative, which is a positive, right? So then this is equal to positive 1. Okay, so the axis of symmetry is at x is equal to positive 1, okay? So x equals positive 1 is right there, right? So this is your axis of symmetry. Now we need to find the vertex, right? And remember, the axis of symmetry always runs through the vertex. So we know the vertex is going to be somewhere on this line, right? Now to find where your vertex is, all you need to do is plug in what you just found for your x value, plug that bad boy into your equation or your function right here, okay? So then this is going to be equal to y is equal to 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 5, right? 1 squared is equal to 1, so 1 times 3 is 3, so we get uh, this is equal to 3 minus 6 plus 5, right? 3 minus 6 is negative 3, so negative 3 plus 5 is equal to, uh, sorry, positive 2. This is a positive 2, okay? So whenever your x value is equal to 1, your y value is equal to positive 2. So the vertex is at 1 comma 2. Okay, so 1 comma 2 right there. All right, now if you want a sense of how this parabola is going to look, is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Again, just look at the very first number right here. So we have a positive 3, right? So it's positive, so we know it's going to go up. And it's bigger, uh, 3, that's bigger than 1, so it's going to be relatively skinny. Okay, so we need to find two more points to graph this parabola like that, right? Now, one thing you can see here is your y-intercept, right? This number at the very end, right? The plus c, plus c, this is where your parabola crosses the y-axis. So here it would be at 5, right? So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So this is 0, 5, and this one is 1, 
2, okay? So we just need one more spot over here to draw our parabola. Now, uh, remember the axis of symmetry cuts your parabola directly in half, right? So to get from the vertex to this point, you have to go over 1 and then up 1, 2, 3. So we can do the same thing going the other way. We can go over 1 and then go up 1, 2, 3. So then we can put a point right here. So what is that point? Well, we went over 1, so that means this is 2 something. And then we went up 3, so same thing, 5, okay? So then this spot is 2, 5. And then we have our three points. So we can graph that son of a biscuit. <laughs> Almost said it. All right, vertex form. So this is vertex form right here. Y is equal to A times X minus H squared plus K. Now here again, the A tells you a lot of the parabola, if it's going to open up or down, and if it's skinny or fat, okay? And then when it's in vertex form like this, H and K are basically like your X and your Y, okay? The only difference is... This H right here, you have to kind of take the opposite sign that's next to it. Okay, so for example, here we have S of X is equal to 2 times X minus 4 squared plus 5. Okay, so first of all, we have a positive 2 right here, so we know it's going to be opening upwards, and then it's going to be a little skinny. And then here we have negative 4 and positive 5. Okay, so this tells you where your vertex is. H and K, that's where your vertex is. So here we're going to have, for our vertex, positive 4 and then positive 5. Okay, and then skipping ahead a little bit, here we have uh, t of x is equal to negative one half x plus four squared minus one, right? So here we have negative one half, so that means it's going to open up, up. It's going to be opening up downwards, and it's going to be kind of fat, right? And then if we want to find our vertex, right, h and k, here the vertex would be at negative four, negative one. Okay, so the h you basically just take the opposite sign of it, right? So coming back to this one, let's finish this one out. So the vertex is at four five, right? So four. Five. That's the vertex. Okay, now in order to find two more points, we can make a little x, y table. Okay, so one point that we already know is 4, 5. Okay, so we need to find two more points, right? One over here and one over here to figure out uh, how to graph this. So one key thing is you want to make sure whatever numbers you pick right there, they're the same distance away from this number 4 right here. All right, so for example, if I picked 2 over here, I would want to pick 6 over here. Why? Because they're both 2 spaces away from 4, okay? If I put a 0 over here, I'd want to put a, an 8 right there, again, because they're both 4 spaces away from each other, okay? And here I'm going to use 0 and 8 specifically because I want to use 0 because it's going to be easy to plug it into this x, right? Because it'll probably make a lot of stuff go away. So if we plug in a 0 for x over here, uh, this is going to be equal to 2 times 0 minus 4 squared plus 5, right? So PEMDAS, right? So 0 minus 4 is negative 4, so negative 4 squared is positive 16. Okay, so then here we're going to have 2 times positive 16 plus 5. So 2 times 16 is 32. So 32 plus 5 is 37. All right, so we got a 37 right there. Okay, now, do I actually have to plug in 8 to this formula right here, or this function? No, I don't, okay? Because uh, since these two spots, these two x values, are the same distance away from this one, that means they're also going to be the same vertical height right here. So this one's also going to be 37, right? Because a parabola is symmetrical, right? So again, this spot right here, the vertex was at 4, 5. Um, this one should be a lot higher. So let's just say that this spot right here is 37, okay? So we have a spot at 0, 37, so that'd be right there. And then uh, we have a spot at 8, 37, right? So we'd go over, so this is 5, 6, 7, 8, right? We'll extend that a little bit. And then at 37 right there, okay? And then we can just connect the dots just like that. Okay, so I'm actually going to let you graph this one, but the main thing I wanted to show you was how to find the vertex in each scenario, just because that's the most important thing to figure out when graphing vertex form. All right, let's finish up with intercept form. So this is intercept form right here. So f of x is equal to a times, in parentheses, x minus p times x minus q, okay? So these two numbers right here are basically the zeros of your parabola, okay? Those tell you where those x-intercepts are. And also, just like the last problem we did, it's going to be taking the opposite sign over here, okay? So for example, right here we have a of x is equal to 2 times x plus 1, x minus 5, right? So this number and this number, those tell you where the zeros are, okay? Those x values, but you're going to take the, the opposite sign. So here we would say x is equal to negative 1, and then here we would say x is equal to positive 5, okay? So if we graph it over here, it's at negative 1 and positive 5. Good, okay, so 1, negative 1, and positive 5. Okay, and remember our a value over here at the very front is a positive 2, so we know it's going to be opening upwards, right? So we know it's going to look 
something like that, okay? But we actually need to find the vertex. So the first thing to do here, like when we were doing standard form, we have to find the axis of symmetry first and then the vertex, okay? The way we find the axis of symmetry here is gonna be a little bit different. So one little kind of shortcut way you could do it or a different way you could do it is just add these two numbers together and divide it by two. Okay, so we're gonna say that the axis of symmetry is equal to negative one plus five divided by two, okay? So negative one plus five is equal to four. So four divided by two is equal to two. Okay, so we know that the axis of symmetry is at x is equal to two. Okay, so I want, yeah, right there. Okay, so that makes sense. It's three spots away from this one and three spots away from this one, right? So we found the axis of symmetry and remember the vertex is gonna be somewhere on here, right? So we at least know the x value of our vertex, right? It's gonna be two. So to find the y, all we need to do is plug it into our uh, function right here. Okay, so we're gonna say that a of two, right? Cause we're plugging in two for it is equal to two times two plus one times two minus five, all right? So then this is gonna be equal to two times three times negative three, okay? Uh, six times negative three is negative 18. Okay, so our, this is basically our y value, right? So y is equal to negative 18 when x is equal to two, all right? So our vertex is at, I'll just write it out, two negative 18. Okay, so two, negative 18. Again, I didn't draw this down far enough. So we'll just say that negative 18 is like right there. Okay, so then we'll say the vertex is right here at two, negative 18. And then we can just connect the dots like so, bro. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.